Today I'm going to talk about one of the most important things, if not the most important things you can do to run a successful practice or business. It's how to hire. The most important aspect of my team is having the right team. Without a good team, I can't do what I do. If you've ever gone into the office on a weekend to see a patient or gone into your business, whether it's a dental office, a medical office, or a restaurant, to see one customer and you don't have your team there, you know how difficult that can be. Oftentimes, I'm called to see an emergency on the weekend. I realize what that's going to have to take. It's going to have to take opening up the door, turning on the power, turning on the compression, opening up the suctions, turning on the computer, getting the patient's information to the computer, getting the right instruments in there, then doing the exam, getting the light on, taking an x-ray, looking at the x-ray, developing it, or putting it through the proper software. It's a lot of work. And oftentimes I'm there for a half hour, which would only take me two minutes if I had my team around me. So in Danny Meyer's book, Setting the Table, he talks about the most important people in his community. And that is not the customers that go to his restaurants. It's the team that serve those customers. In my office, the most important people are not my patients, although they're important, but the people that serve them, and that's our team. Having the right team is everything. In our recent Instagram, I talked about the five-part ways of hiring and to develop a good team. And I'm very proud of my team. Not a day goes by when someone doesn't say to me, Mike, Dr. Sonic, whatever they're going to call me, you have a great team. Where do you get such great people? Well, they're out there. There are great people out there. And great people like to work for great organizations. And I feel very proud to have a great organization with great teammates. Some of them have been there for six months. Some have been there for 25 years. And they're all over the gamut. We can talk about building the team a little bit later. But let's now focus on how do you get the right people in the right seats and how do you do that? Well, it starts, and I'm going to go over nine, nine parts with you right now, from the advertisement to making the offer. So the first thing you need to do is to structure a really good ad. If you have any questions about that, you can shoot me an email at mike at sonicdmd.com or go to our website, and I'm happy to give you information on how to craft the proper ad. But the ad should talk about what it is, the job. It should have a nice job description. It should be upbeat. It should talk about what you you would like for, to, for someone to have that job. We want someone who's servant-oriented, who has good team values, has good integrity, you know, that wants to work you know, with a great organization and wants to serve. We talk about those things in our ad. Also, you should talk about the benefit package. Do you offer medical? Do you offer days off, a 401k, that vacation time, that kind of stuff. And we post our ads in various places, Indeed and other, you know, other organizations that, that serve us for that. And we get probably about 10 to 20 people a week apply to each job. Now, we're always hiring. We are never not hiring because we have a team of 25 people. So it's important to get people in the pipeline because it takes a while to get to hire the right person. It probably takes me close to six to nine months to hire each individual. So we're always looking. And we're looking for administrative people. We're looking for clinical people. We're looking for dental hygienists. So we're always looking for somebody in, the, in those areas. And it keeps the office relatively fresh. We may be fully staffed as we are right now, but we're still looking because I'll be overstaffed a little bit. It's always better to be a little bit overstaffed because you don't want that stress level to go too high. So anyway, you have to structure the proper ad. Once the people respond to the ad, we ask for two things. We ask them to send us a resume, and we ask them to fill out a culture index. From a resume, I can look very quickly and see what, what, what they've done. I can see if it's done nicely. Is it just typed out or have they structured it properly? Did they work with a graphic artist? Is it clean? Is it one page or is it 10 pages? Is it small type that I can't read? It gets me to tell a lot about the person just from the resume. It also gets me to see where they've worked, et cetera. Are they coming from the dental field? Are they coming from a hospitality field, a medical field, et cetera? And then we do something else that you probably haven't heard of. It's the culture index. The culture index is a personality profile. It looks at, and we'll talk about this in another video, but it looks at seven different traits. It looks at how autonomous they are. You know, are they going to be someone who's going to be able to take direction? Or are they going to tell me what to do? It looks at how social they are. Are they good talking to patients? Or are they very quiet? They're, they're uncomfortable with human interaction. What's their pace? Are they fast-paced or slow-paced? In our environment, we want someone who's going to be relatively fast-paced. Are they detail-oriented? Or are they sloppy? They don't really care about details. They're sort of casual. We don't want casual people in the medical environment. We want high-detail people. And then it looks at their energy level, both at work and out of work. And it looks at two other things. One is how much creativity they have. 
Now, I don't need really creative people in the office except for Jose, my IT person, who does all of our graphic artists. He is very creative. He's the most creative person in the office. And that's his job, to be a creator. And then we look at something else called logic. Logic is how emotional they are. Under stress, do they melt down? Do they become very immature? Do they start to rant and rave? And you know the type of people. Or under stress, are they like this? Now, my partners, Dr. Ku and Dr. Ma, and myself, we have logic, which is the, which is the last level, of 10 out of a zero to 10. Both of us are very good under stress. All three of us, Dr. Ku, Dr. Ma, and myself, we're very good under stress. Now, why is that great? We've never fought. So if there's a problem, we just talk about it very logically. So I want relatively logical people in my practice because patients oftentimes are stressed. They'll call up, they'll get angry, etc. So if you have somebody who's very emotional, you really don't want them in that seat. So that's the culture index. Now I look at that culture index and I look at the resume and I probably look at 15, maybe 20 a week. And it doesn't take me more than five minutes to look at 15 to 20 resumes. Within two or three seconds, I can see what that profile is. And if I like it, then I'll tell my office manager, send them an application. They fill out our office application and then we schedule them for a FaceTime interview. Now, one of my office managers, Taylor, she does all of our FaceTime interviews, and she spends maybe 5 to 15 minutes talking at somebody. Those are very important. We don't have to waste time having them come to the office. They don't have to spend the time coming there. We do it online. 50% of the people that we schedule for a FaceTime interview don't show up. 50% don't show up. If they don't show up for a FaceTime interview, we will never hire them because that's the first impression that we have. If they do show up and their hair is un, uh, you know, uncombed, or if they're driving a car with kids screaming in the background, or if they're eating, you know, if they have long painted fingernails that are this long, they won't be able to type, we're probably not going to go on to the next phase. But during that FaceTime interview, we ask them a lot of important questions. And we have a series of about 50 questions that we'll ask you know, people. And we ask some of them that are important, some of them not so important, but we create a we create a dialogue and a conversation. During that conversation, we get to see what they're like. If they pass that FaceTime interview, and that's step number five, add resume culture index application, FaceTime interview. If they pass that, they come in, we invite them to come in for an interview. Now for an interview, probably about a third of them won't show for the interview. And that's after the five part series. But the ones that do show, we do what we call a blink interview. And, and um, Malcolm Glidewell talks about that in his book, Blink. Within just a few moments of meeting somebody, you do make, you know, there's, you have a decision of whether you like that person or don't. And some of the people that I have great relationships with, as soon as we met, it was like a click. We talk about it as love at first sight. There's that click, you know, and that blink, you immediately attracted to somebody. But it's not just love. It's like, is this a person that would be a good employee? Is this a person that comes in on time? Are they neat? Are they clean? Do they look you in the eye? Do they shake your hand? Do they give you a firm grip? You know? Are they appropriate? So one of the things that I look at is how are they attired? Do they come in on time and what do they look like? Is their hair combed? Okay. Do they look me in the eye? Do they have a nice smile? Okay. Do they have clean fingernails? Do they have nice clothes? Are their shoes polished? Those things are very important because during that interview, they should come at their best. That's where they should look their best. If they don't look their best that day, what are they going to come in on a casual day? So that's very important. So usually within about 30 seconds, I know whether that's a good person or not. If I do like the person, I'll spend probably five to 10 minutes talking with them. Dr. Mom might come in, Dr. Ku, my office manager, Taylor may come in, and a lot of other people may come in and meet that person. If we like them, we invite them to come back for a working interview. They'll come back and maybe spend three to four hours with us. They'll put on the uniform and spend some time. If we like them at that point, okay, then we go on and ask for references. We'll do a background check and then we'll present the offer. So that's our series of doing it. It works really well and I think we have a great team because of it. And very rarely do we make a wrong hire. If we do make a wrong hire, we know immediately. How long does it take? Usually they're gone within about two or three days. The nice thing is I never have to fire anybody unless it's an integrity problem and hopefully we don't have that. But most people, we know it's just not nice. It's not a good fit. Now for me, it's not a big deal to hire the wrong person because we have a full office of people that are working. But for that person, if I hire somebody that's the wrong person and they leave a job to come and it's not right, it's a big deal for them. And I tell the people that I interview that, I go, for you, it's a bigger decision than it is for us. I can go on a lot longer on that, but I just thought I'd give you a little bit of background because so many people ask how I have such a great team. I consider myself blessed and fortunate, but it didn't happen by accident. There's a process. And probably one of the most important things was the culture index that I learned from Michael Hall, 
uh, who talks. If you want to find more about him, you can go to cultureindex.com and you can see how to get that. But it's a great little test, and I'm happy to send you one if you'd like me to tell you what you're like, because I can tell what you're like immediately by looking at it. Hopefully that was helpful for you all today, and you have a great day. Remember, continue to be the gift.